Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. All right. I want to welcome you. This is the, the seventh annual time that we have installed these bricks in what we call the Rondo Commemorative Plaza History Walk. Now, I know you've heard this said that in the African-American community, there's a belief that if you say a name out loud of an ancestor or a loved one, then that ancestor or that loved one comes into your consciousness. And if you say the name, the name will come out. That was the theory behind this particular, this particular art exhibit behind us. If you hit the gong the right way on your street in Rondo, those gongs represent Rice Street to Lexington. So if you lived, let's say, on Avon, and you hit the gong on Avon, a sound would reverberate. And all of the people that lived in that area would come into your consciousness. And you'd be able to feel them. You'd be able to talk to them in your own way. And I asked one woman if, if she wanted to hit the gong and bring that consciousness of someone that she knew into her, into her brain, into her present space. So she was all excited. She hit the gong. And I said, now, how about that? And I said, now we're going to do it for you. And excuse the language. She said, if I hit that gong, you mean to tell me that the people that I knew will come into my consciousness? I said, you got it. Are you ready to hit the gong? And she said, I never want to see that son of a bitch again. <laughs> so she didn't hit it. But for the rest of you, if you want to hit the gong, it's there. And so it's that consciousness of the African-American culture that if you hit it, and now we want to add it another dimension to that. Now you can see it. Those bricks are another way of bringing into the consciousness the community of Rondo. As you walk down those bricks, there's over 300 of them now. As you walk down there, you're able to look down on the ground and you'll see people that we've known, people that you've gone to school with, people that you worked with, people that, that you dance with, people that you fell in love with, all on that walkway. So for those of you who have come here to look at the bricks that you have placed into our history walk, I want to thank you. I want to thank you for contributing. It's like a big, wonderful plaid blanket where you people are sewing a blanket and it keeps people warm. That history walk is a walkway of Rondo. And for those of you who haven't been here before, please take a moment to walk down that pathway and you'll be able to bring all of these memories back into your consciousness and we'll keep the memory of Rondo alive, which is the purpose of that walk. I'm Marvin Roger Anderson and I'm the executive director here and on behalf of the Rondo Center of Diverse Expression, which is uh, the old New Jerusalem building, and the Rondo Commemorative Plaza, I welcome all of you to our, to our program this afternoon. Let me take a moment to introduce one of my board members here, Mr. Jonathan Palmer. He's a board member, and uh, I, I want to introduce Mr. Russell Ballinger there. Russell, could you stand up? A lot of people know you. But Russell, Russell was on the St. Paul City Council. Uh, he served a temporary position for six months because something happened. And when Russell was on the St. Paul City Council, he passed, he convinced the other members of the St. Paul City Council that they needed to do something that hadn't been done in over 50 years. And you know what that was? Russell convinced the people that they needed to take the name Concordia off and bring the name of Rondo Avenue back to this community.
community. So, Russell, we thank you for your leadership. And if you look across the street there, that was the sign. We have an historic Rondo sign on it. And the Rondo Avenue now goes from Lexington all the way down to Rice Street, thanks to the impetus that Russell gave for us. So, again, Russell, thank you so much. I want to take a moment to introduce Miss Debbie Montgomery. Everybody knows Deb. She's here. She has bricks into the ground. Melvin Carter Sr. there, a former protector of our community. Thank you for coming again. And all of you that are here today, let's see, who else did I forget? There's a friend of mine back there from high school, Mike Silverman and his wife, Joan. Mike, thanks for coming out. He can still walk. We can't stand too long, but we're high school classmates. I'm not doing too bad, am I? All right. So we want to get started before it rains. I want to bring out my staff in a minute so they can say hello. Here's the program. We have a brief program. We're going to have a, a, some remarks made by Geneva Harper. and. We're going to give each of you an opportunity to say a few words about your brick, if you're so inclined. And after that, we have ice cream. We have cookies and ice cream. We invite you to come into the center. We're doing some interviews in there right now, but as long as it doesn't rain, we'll be here for the rest of the afternoon. So let's get started. Geneva, would you mind coming up, please? And tell them a little bit about your program. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for coming, and thank you for not raining. I'm so glad the rain is, rain is holding off. Well, I had the pleasure of doing a program in April, which involved 19 women, 90 years and up, who are mothers of the community. And what motivated me were, these are the women who shaped all of us. All the people that came before us are why we're such great, productive people today. So, and some of the mothers are here today, a lot of the families are here today, and after I say a few words, if you'd like to come up and say something about your mother, please do, because we want to we want to celebrate them, because they are just so special. And, of course, they've been here 90 years, so what better way to celebrate people that have been here and are still in, some of them are in the same houses that they raise their children in. So it's just really amazing. So um, the bricks are over there and please go take pictures and please celebrate them. Um, I'm just gonna read off everybody's name and then um, if any of the families wanna come up and say anything, I welcome them to come up. But first, um, we're gonna have a moment of silence because we have lost two of our golden women. Um, Patricia Allen, and then my aunt Cassie Neal, they've passed away. And um, so if everyone could just bow their heads momentarily, we're gonna have a moment of silence for them and their families, thank you. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry. It's kind of emotional for me because I feel like they're my mothers. So I'm just going to read off the names so everyone knows what ladies were involved. And um, then if any of the families would like to come up and say anything, I, I please come up. Please come up and say something. So Patricia Louise Allen, Thelma Rose Bivens, Nina Marie Black Zachary, Verlene Price Booker, Dorothea Joanne Burns, Martha Naomi Cobb, Nellie Cotton, Crystal Pearl Durham, Velma Lee French, Constance T. Graham, or everyone knows her as Connie, Sally May Gray, Freelix, Yvonne Elaine Crushan Harrington, Cassie B. Lynn, Bernadine Delvita McGee, Cassie Marie Neal, Christine Ursel Thomas, 
Joan Frances Pertit Thompson, Gloria Ellen Wilson, Louise Yvonne Woods. So those are my Golden Ladies of Rondo 2024. They'll always hold a special place in my heart and now they're forever in our hearts at the Rondo Plaza. Thank you. Thank you, Geneva. Now we have some, it, everybody should have a program. If you haven't uh, got a program, I'm gonna refer to the program. Raise your hand if you don't have one. Over here. Couple over here. So I have a moment here while they're here. Linda and uh, Katie and Simia, would you come forward for a second, please? This is a team effort and I wanna take a moment to introduce them before it gets too late. This is Linda Cobb, who is our administrative manager here. This is Katie, Katie Fry, who's our program manager. This is Simia Nelson, our recent graduate, who's now in St. Thomas. He does all of our music for us. He's been with us now for like three or four years. So we've watched him grow up. And there's one more. She'll be taking pictures. Naja, where is she? Naja Hill. Naja Hill. Hi, Liz. Naja Hill. So would you give them a round of because it couldn't be done without this group of people here. And I think we are, you're serving ice cream now and cookies. And so you, everybody will be, get a chance to get one of those. So thank you for coming. Jim Hart, another board member. Would you mind standing up and being acknowledged by this group? All right, thank you guys so much. All right, here we go. Look at your, looking at your book, uh, one of the things you'll see at the very beginning, you see the Century Club? Anyone who attains the age of 100 years gets a free brick in our history walk. So if you don't mind admitting your age when you're 100 years old, let us know and you got a brick coming. Uh, you can see that we had Gordy Kirk. He started, it's called the Century Club. Gordy Kirk started it, and this year we've added Adele Doty. Is anybody here from the Adele Doty family? Okay, thank you so much. Do you want to say anything? Come on up, if you do. Um, my, uh, Anna Del Doty was my grandfather, Charles Graham's baby sister. She was born here in St. Paul, Minnesota, and she married Edward Doty, who was a jazz musician. He used to play on WTCN on Sunday afternoons, and they moved to Washington, D.C., and um, they inspired me, my music career as a kid, playing piano and violin growing up. And um, unfortunately, uh, two days before the brick ceremony last year, she passed at 108 years old. And um, I'm just praying that I still have those genes in my body. So, um, but she was my favorite aunt, and I'm just just inspired to give her a brick. And um, thanks so much. All right, thank you. Get you to play the piano next year. All right, <laughs> whatever. Uh, four is a, we had a group of visitors here from the city of Baltimore. Uh, they were touring and they spent spent a uh, half a day here at the plaza and at the center and when we took him outside at the history walk one of the members from Baltimore said this is such a great idea I'm gonna buy a brick number four from your family she said in Baltimore so we're happy to have that 
Betty Bruin family. Is someone here for Bruins? The Dotson family. Number eight, Nicholas Burden, 493 Carroll. The Few family. That's Herman P.D. Few. I know he's not here. He sent his Richard Fosselman. The Galbraiths. Here? Would you like to say something, Deb? First of all, it's Gilbreth, not Galbraith. <laughs> One, um, I was raised by my grandparents, uh, Isabel and Albert uh, Gilbreth, and uh, we had a great family. We lived at 978 St. Anthony. Uh, my grandfather was one of the Red Caps at the depot, captain of the Red Caps. Um, as I was just telling somebody else, you know, we lived on tips. If you had a good tip week, you had meat. If you didn't, we didn't. But you always had the family. Somebody, if you needed something, the Rondo family would be there to support you, and then you returned it in that. So um, I just think that that's Rondo strong, and that's what we're all about. And I appreciate the fact that my neighbor for a lifetime. <laughs> He's lived across the street from me his whole life. Uh, thank you so much for the opportunity to say something. Thank you, Dick. The Ray family. Someone here representing the Rays. I know we were, come on, come on over here. They got Cleveland Ray, Teresa Ray, Paul Ray, Pauline Ray, and Joseph Ray Sr. Please come forward. And you are? Karen Carey. Oh, hi, I'm Karen Carey Bonner. Uh, you left uh, another Ray out, which is their mother, Henrietta Williams. She was a Ray, but her husband died, and she married a Williams. So um, we decided to put them all together, and um, I'm very happy about that. Thank you. Thank you. I'm sure if someone, one of the Rays, is it your nephew, Joe Ray's son, Carl, Carl? What was his name? Kevin. I was on the radio for many, many years. Kyle Ray. Yeah, Kyle Ray. They said that they would be here. Thank you for coming. Tubby and Connie Graham, the Graham family. Oh, that was you. Okay. You want to come back? You're welcome. Come on. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, anyway, uh, again, um, Tubby is my dad, Ralph Graham, and Connie, my mom over here. And um, last year when the brick ceremony, we decided to get both of them a brick. But uh, my mom is also a uh, Golden Women of Rondo. So she's being recognized with two bricks this year. And I'm just blessed that she's been around here for 98 and a half years, going strong. You can ask her any question, show her any picture, and she will tell you. So I'm just so glad that my mom is still here to celebrate with us. And if there's anyone else you want to stay here, <laughs> there you go your dad tubby wasn't wasn't tubby working for the minnesota senate at one time he was sergeant of arms there for many years and what was their relationship to billy williams He was the, he was the executive. We have a brick here. We have a brick. We have three bricks here. The first one says William Billy Graham, whatever. I mean, yeah, uh, Williams. And then the second brick says in an executive aid to 14 Minnesota governors, one of the longest serving 
employees in the state of Minnesota, 14 governors. So that's a wonderful legacy. We have that brick here and people stop at and look at it all of the time. So thank you so much. All right, um, we're gonna keep on going. You've heard, Geneva, would you like to come back and say about your family? Who's there? Who is it? Come on. All right. There you go. Leland? I remember you from Northside. Oh, I was yeah, in, yeah, from yeah. Russell Avenue. Yeah. It's been a minute, man. Yeah. How you doing? Good, how you doing? Not bad at all. <laughs> Good to see you. Good to say a few words. Right. Yeah. Uh, my name is Leland Carragher. Uh, I grew up in North Minneapolis, but I was born in Anchor Hospital, St. Paul. My, my grandparents came here from uh, Oklahoma in 1923. And, um, okay. I was born in Anchor Hospital, St. Paul, Minnesota. My, uh, my mother's name was Lorraine Harper. My grandmother was Billy Harper. Her picture's on the wall. And she had four children. One son lived in Oklahoma. Her oldest was my mother, Lorraine Harper. Then it was Sherman Harper Jr. and Virgella Harper. Uh, even though I grew up in North Minneapolis, I feel the connection. Every time I come to St. Paul, I feel the link. You know, we lived right there on Rondo and Avon at one time, yes. That's where they, they lived there when I was born. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I think it was uh it was nine thirty four. It was about that's what's on my birth certificate. <laughs> yeah. So but uh I I remember oh man. Even though I grew up in Minneapolis, I was in St. Paul all the time. You know, my mother would bring me and my sister here to her mother's house. And for a while, she lived right next to the hollow. And uh, so I would play in the hollow. And my Uncle Sherman would take me up on the avenue, up on uh, Dale and Rondo, you know, to the pool hall. And, you know, around, uh, I can't remember the name of the pool hall. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I remember the liquor store. Stone. I remember uh, I remember Dr. Crone. Yeah, I remember him. Because I think at that time it was, was one black doctor in St. Paul and one in Minneapolis. Yeah. Doctor, I remember him. I knew some of his family. But uh, I don't have too much more to say other than that, though. I'm enjoying this very much. You know, I'm I'm enjoying the connection. You know, I'll always have that connection. I'm North Sider, but I have that connection right. This is my birth right here. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. When I returned, I, I was I was out of St. Paul for a number of years for college and for school and some traveling and the Peace Corps. And when I came back to Minnesota I was under a strain and I moved to Minneapolis. I moved to the north side of Minneapolis before I came back to St. Paul and one of the first guys I met was Leland who lived right there on Plymouth. And I lived on 1224 Russell Avenue for about five years. Spent my time over there. Thank you Leland for coming and for those, for those comments. Uh, we'll keep moving on here, right? Uh, Geneva Buckhalter, 
Howard Taylor Jr., Devante and DeCarlo Jackson. Where are they? Here they are, right here. Come on. Good evening, good afternoon, Rondo. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Dwayne Jackson. I, the gentleman was just here, Dr. Crump. I came to St. Paul in 1993. And 1993, and I happened to buy Dr. Crump's old home. And the first couple, two or three years, you guys, Rondo would come to my door, knock, knock, knock. We want to see Dr. Crump's house. And I had no idea who you guys were. I would just open the door, and you guys would come in, look around, and say, oh, Dr. Crump helped me when I had the flu, or he helped me when I hurt my leg. And I thought, wow, who is this doctor? And so my sons grew up here. They were born Midway Hospital, and they became musicians by way of Walker West. And well, thank you. And so they would perform all around town, uh, any event they could get, they were performing. And you guys again, walk around though, guys, would look at me like, who is that guy? We have no idea, but his sons could play. <laughs> and so and one thing about the uh, Rondo community, uh, there are a vast, vast amount of musicians around here, which I didn't know, and now I do. And so... I thought it would be nice to get my sons dedicated now. They've been performing for almost 20 years now in this community and around the world. And it's just a great thing. And thank you for accepting me and welcoming me to Rondo. I've been here for 33 years now. And I'm going to try to hang out for another couple, three decades. <laughs> thank you. It was uh, Fred Shuck's pool hall where a lot of us got our education. And Dr. Crump was a doctor. Who was the dentist? Everybody remember? Who? Dr. Williams is one, and who's the other one? Dr. Weber. Oh, yeah. Okay. Is that you? Okay. All right, we're going to keep moving. Ethel Nance family. This is a very interesting. Ethel, or someone here to represent the Ethel Nance family? You can look at it there. It's 20, 20, 21, 22, 23. They're actually in, uh, her, her granddaughter came and was talk, told us about Ethel Ray Nance. She was the first African-American police woman in the city of St. Paul, so they say. And she was also the first African-American to be hired as a stenographer at the Minnesota State Legislature. And she's written a book. She actually spent time in Duluth before she came down here. And her daughter has written a book about Ethel Ray Nance. And we're getting a copy of it for our collection here. She was an extraordinary woman from Duluth, moved to St. Paul, and established a great career here. 147 Iglehart, it's the George Polis family. Uh, did they come? Did you make it? Yeah, you did. Well, come on up, please. Hello, everyone. My name is Marilyn Paulus, and this is my daughter, Elena Marnell. I'm really happy to be here. When I heard about this project, I had to be a part of it. Um, I'll have my daughter show the visual effects. Um, my grandparents were George and Zacharula Paulus. They were Greek immigrants and um, made their life here. My grandpa had a pool hall at Rice and Sherburn and also on East 7th um, downtown. And um, I didn't know my grandpa. I'm sad to say that, but um, my grandma was a big part of my life through grade school. Um, I think I said she spoke very little English, um, but I'm here to honor them. And I think about them every day. Um, also, I don't know if everyone knows, but you can find house records on the Ramsey County Historical Society website. So this was a picture of 147 Eigelhart. Um, it was city records of the demolition. 
Um, so it shows how much the house was worth and how much my grandmother got for it. Um, that's it. I'm really happy to be here. Thank you. Thank you. Rhonda was such a rich community of people from all ethnicities and you name it, uh, our friends and neighbors. So we're very happy to have you here. And they grew up right on Iglehart there. That was a great part. All right. Um, James Pillow. His bricks. Come on. Come on up. Say, come on. Come on down or come on up. Let's go. Don't be shy. Good to see you. So glad you made it. Come on. Okay. Hey, everyone. Hey, hey. Um, James Pillow, so our father, myself, Nicole Pillow, and my sister, Nastasia. And um, I'll just say that we've been sitting in the back here going, we know that face. We know that person. <laughs> and we might not be able to put your name, but we grew up. Um, our home, 942 Hague, um, was the place where people landed to not just get their hair styled, but also to find a place where they belonged, they could feel cared for, loved on. And, and Daddy, you know, he specialized in black hair care, but the way we see it is he really specialized in the hearts of people because he had a way of seeing people. He had a way of connection. He created safe spaces. Um, where people could like literally come as they are. It didn't matter who you were, you could show up. Sometimes you didn't even have an appointment, you just wanted to be there, right? And so I'm gonna go on a limb and just say, if you know our father, James Pillow, hair extraordinary, put your hand up in the air, wave it like you just don't care. <laughs> you see? Um, and and I'll just tell this quick, quick story my sister and I can both relate to. By the way, we just actually lost our father. Um, so this is fresh. Yeah. <sighs> May 1st, he turned 84, and he passed on uh, May 7th. And we held a legacy luncheon, um, and then since we've held his memorial, and he's had a service out at the um, um, Fort Snelling. Anywho, it's still very fresh. Um, um, but the, the fun story is that my sister and I and my other sibling, uh, Nicholas, um, <laughs> see, you don't understand. We couldn't go anywhere and somebody not know our daddy. <laughs> and people wouldn't say like, oh, hi, Nicole, or hi, Anastasia. They'd say, oh, you James Pillow's daughter. Like it just was. And so we didn't get, get, we did not get away with nothing. We had accountability all through the community. Um, but I say all that to say is um, um, thank you for just being a part of our legacy because that's how we see what happened um, with what dad provided. Um, and anybody who was in his presence and grace, you're a part of that, that legacy. So um, I thank you all. And anything from you, sis? All right. What was the name of the other shop that was across before Hague? The shop before what? Daddy, the shop that Daddy was at before. Um, on hey, Hague. someone might know. Yeah. We'll find out. All right. Hair legend, James Pillow. Okay. The Presleys. Uh, there's a number of bricks for the Presleys. Is anyone here to speak for the Presley family? Terrell Bubba. Where are they? Okay. <laughs> Come on up. <laughs> we get a special section. Well, because none of my um, family is here, I'm going to speak for them. Uh, we're talking about Juanita Smith. Um, can't remember what his name is, but he's brown. And um, the Presleys, those are their grandparents. And then Baba Terrell, that's my mom's baby brother. He was married to Virginia. 
And then the kids are Valley, Dennis, Chipper, Theo, Teeny. And um, they, um, fortunately, the only person of the kids left is Teeny. We've lost all the rest. Uh, Bubba's gone. So is Virginia. And so is uh, our other grandparents. But because nobody's here, I'm just going to stand up. And anybody else need me to represent them? <laughs> just put your hand up in the air. Yes, you. <laughs> Well, thank you again. Say that somebody had a... Well, come on, we're family here. Speak on up. I can't hear that. Pardon? Oh, Dan Presley, yeah. And Ken and Red? Yeah. You guys remember? And Gloria? Yeah, the Presley family. Red was... Uh, Red was a police officer over in Minneapolis for many years. And yeah, the Presleys. Everybody, yeah. Big family. Everybody knew them. The Prims? Prim? You want to speak for the Prim family? All right. They have 40, 41, and 42, and 43. And they also wanted to put uh, Henry Thomas as part of their family. Henry Thomas was a former director of the Halle Q. Brown Center for many, many years. Steve, number 45, 46, 47, Gro Grouskis and Scroggins, Ray and Charlene. Are they here? Okay. Martha Clayton, Cornelia Smith, Helen Smith. Come on, please. Good afternoon. My name is Althea Rupert, and um, uh, the three bricks, numbers 49, 50, and 51, are all family members. Martha Clayton was my great-grandmother, Cornelia Smith, was my grandmother, and then Helen Smith was my aunt. And that family lived at 761 Rondo for probably 30 plus years. Um, they did move from Rondo before the interstate came through. And Cornelia Smith uh, was very well educated. She graduated from the University of Minnesota School of Architecture in 1918. And um, Dr. Margot Lloyd, um, that is my late sister. Do any of you remember uh, Margot? Yes. Um, she was a professor at North Central University. And Gordon Robbins is my brother. And then yours truly, Althea Rupert. Jerry and Laura May Robbins were my parents. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, we. I am the youngest, yes. Yes, I can't hear you very well, but... Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> okay, and let's see. Um, for my mother, I meant to mention um, that she was the receptionist for the Minnesota State Attorney General, uh, for three um, Minnesota State Attorney Generals, Douglas Head, Warren Spanis, and Skip Humphrey. And then I mentioned uh, Jerry and Laura Mae Robbins uh, were my parents. Jerry Robbins was the president of the Dining Car Employees Union number 516. Yes, indeed. Um, 
and all were members of Pilgrim Baptist Church. So our family goes back about four generations uh, in terms of our membership at Pilgrim. And uh, that's what I wanted to share with you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. You got a picture of the, the, the architect? We should have that, a story. That sounds like a, a story that should be up here. We're gathering stories on Rondo Pioneers here, and that sounds like a perfect story that we should have. If you got any information or picture, come see me later on. Okay. Uh, the Prims, Henry Thomas, and Perogues, Dr. Margot. Philip Webb. Are they still here? They were, yeah, come on. All right. Hello, Rondo. Hello. I am Chevelle Webb, a baby sister to Philip Webb. And there was eight of us. And I was born on 764 Aurora. And Philip is uh, next, the football team, he's standing next to uh, Coach Goodlow. And um, he shares some stories about Philip. Um, the reason I'm here, Philip passed July 20th of this year. And um, I, I knew he was a great athlete, but I didn't know the magnitude of his abilities. Um, he was the, the, the brick says one of Rondo's finest because Rondo had a lot of athletes and, you know, and he was a firefighter for St. Paul and Rondo has always been near and dear to me. I couldn't wait to move back to the city. I had to move to the suburbs for various reasons and take care of my parents and things like that, which I'm Joseph and Fannie Webb's youngest daughter and I'm number seven of eight of us. And um, I met Melvin Carter through Fanny's Kitchen. I don't know if there are a lot of people that remember Fanny's Kitchen, but my mother could cook. And I know everybody's mother could cook, but she really could cook, you know? <laughs> yeah, I could cook, but not like her, not like a lot of people. But um, I met Melvin Carter, who is, you know, a Rondo anchor as well. And um, just, you know, Rondo is near and dear to me. It's my heart. I'm glad I'm back in the cities and it's a beautiful place to live. The people, it's family and um, all my siblings, Shirley, and well, Sandra, uh, Philip, Walter, Joe, Les, Kelly. I have three pastors out of five brothers and, you know, it's just, I love this community and I'm a, his, I love reading about history and I told Deborah, Deborah Montgomery, every time I see her, I'm going to bug you about a book because I love reading and her story is just amazing. But, you know, all of the stories here are just amazing. And I just wanted to donate this brick in Philip's memory and Fanny's kitchen because they were great people. And, you know, I'm glad that I was part of that family, the Webb family, the Battles, the Buckner, my uncle Walter is standing there with Martin Luther King and we have a big church community, but you know, this is where you thrive and it was, it's still a great community to live in and I'm glad I'm back, so. Uh, the next brick that we had was in honor of Bill Johnson's office machines and the story behind, you remember Bill Johnson's office machines up on Selby Avenue, right. All right, and so every Tuesday, Bill, along with my high school classmate, uh, Mike Silverman, they would have lunch uh, at a St. Paul restaurant for many, many years. And Bill passed, uh, and Bill's sister, the Johnson sister, was the wife of Walter McFarlane. Uh, you guys know the McFarlane family, so it was a close family, and they all lived here, and Mike would invited me to come to the luncheon that Bill had established, and I told him about this this program, and some of the other people. Mike got a brick, and then there was a, a guy there who was a nephew of Bud Goldberg. You remember Bud Goldberg? So they got a brick. So you see Bud Goldberg's name in there, 
Randy Siegel is another one. And there's a couple of more bricks that we were happy to sell that day at that luncheon. Very nice luncheon. I'm going to go back and I want to thank Mike for inviting me there. So Bud, Randy, and in honor of Bill Johnson, they're all part of this brick ceremony today. So thanks a lot for that, Mike. Appreciate it. Uh, Penumbra Company, um, did somebody want to say something about Lou Bellamy? This year's, the land right here is the VFW Post uh, 8854, which was the VFW Post, one of the first African-American VFW Post in the state of Minnesota. And out of this VFW Post, the first African-American president of the Minnesota VFW veterans was Gordy Kirk. And I don't know, everybody, raise your hand if you had an opportunity to stop at the old VFW at one time or another. Look at that. And we weren't veterans, were we? <laughs> no, the VFW was known for Ann's Kitchen. Uh, it was known for a very, if you had a long day, you could say that again. Right. Upstairs was the Union Hall. It was also a dance hall. It was also an ice cream place. And next door to the VFW was the old barber shop that the uh, who? Yeah. Young Brothers. The Young Brothers, Dickie and Raymond, were over here for many, many years. And if Dickie, if he was cutting your hair, and he went behind the curtain. You had to get up out of that chair and leave because <laughs> your ear might be gone when he came back. <laughs> I went to tell seriously, I was getting my hair cut in there when I had hair, and Dickie had gone to the curtain, came back, and he said, Whoops. <laughs> I looked at my hand and said, so That's it. I'm going to come here in early in the morning from now on in. <laughs> the Adams. Somebody here to speak on the Adams family, I'm, I'm sure. Come on. I can't. You'd have to come up here. You've been talking. You'd have to come up here so I can hear you. Hey there. Come on. You has it? All right. I am Michael Adams. Uh, on your program, there's a Dr. Elizabeth Adams, a Dr. Lisa Sales Adams, a Dr. Thomas Adams. Those are not their first names. They achieved that award, that honor. And what I'd like to say is they have a lot of doctors came out of this neighborhood. I mean, I'm just amazed that all the people I'm meeting now that, I, that have a, achieved that. But what I find most amazing is that they're still humble. Um, you see them? Hey, what you doing? And greet them back as if times hadn't changed. And we grew up in a time when this was a different neighborhood. Everybody knew everybody. Everybody knew everybody's sons, brothers, sisters, daughters. Um, it's my brother Thomas, Dr. Thomas. <laughs> yes, we are fifth generation Minnesotans. Yeah, we've been here a long, long time. Our great great grandfather, Alfred Goddard, was the first black fireman. Our great grandfather, Fred McCracken, worked for the U.S. Senate. On down the line, our grandfather, Haywood Toussaint, our father, James Adams, our mother, Eloise Adams, and now the next generation and the generation after, Elizabeth. And uh, I'm going to try to find something good to say so I don't ramble, but we are proud to be Minnesotans. We are proud to be from Rondo. Uh, and we are proud to share our love with y'all, and we are happy to receive the love y'all have shared with us. Yeah.
Go ahead. My sister's online, so uh, what's up, Liz? Uh, we happy for her, and so uh, uh, I'm number 59. I am a doctor. I'm proud of that. Uh, what I'm more proud is on the brick, it says Rondo born and bred. That's me. Honey Boy was part of the family, right? Honey, Honey Boy, you, you guys remember Honey Boy and the Golden Gloves? And Eloise, she was uh, ran for city council or one of the first to run for city council. They lived right on St. Albans. Yeah, we remember the family very, very well. Elizabeth, would you want to say a word? Come on. Hello, good afternoon. My name's Elizabeth. And um, those are my uncles that were just up here. I'm just very proud to be a part of a very prestigious family with five generations living in Minnesota. And I'm just con committed to honoring their work in the communities in St. Paul, Minneapolis, Dr. Adam, um, Dr. Thomas Adams, my uncle, executive vice president uh, for Common Bond Communities, my aunt, his wife, Dr. Lisa Sales Adams, superintendent for Minneapolis Public School Districts, and my aunt Liz, who I'm named after, Liz Adams. Um, she recently got her doctorate in uh, responsible AI, so she's a, a world-renowned leader in, in that. My uncle Mike and his wife Patricia, my uncle Chris and his wife Sharon Adams, they own Adams Tax Service. My uncle Greg, I want to sh shout out to my aunt uh, Josephine back there also. And just very involved in the community. I'm, I've taken on since my father passed away in 2013 um, from leukemia, the Frank Adams 5K walk run in partnership with Rondo Days. And so just continuing that, I, I bring my daughter along with me, my daughter Olivia. Um, so I bought a brick in honor of us. That's number 60. My mother, Vicki, my daughter, Olivia, and then I'm Elizabeth Gullickson. So we all have it clustered together. And um, I bring my daughter with me everywhere. So she's seeing my commitment to the Rondo Plaza, the Rondo community, and just passing on to the next generation. So very honored, very honored to be here and um, to have a brick and to have history here now. Thank you. <laughs> Russell, number 61. I'm going to try to keep this brief. It's good to be, it's good to be here in Rondo. Um, <clears throat> Rondo has always been, it's always been right there, right in my heart, uh, wherever I've been. When, um, our house used to be right, right across over here at 812 St. Anthony. And my folks would rent rooms sometimes to some of the other um, railroad workers. My father worked on the railroad. My mother worked for a place called Western Electric. And, and it seems like she went from one place to the next and last hired and first fired. And uh, eventually she started working with the North Central Voters League, who would determine who would be the right people for us to vote for, to help our community. And, and when that happened, we began to see people come through the house. And I remember Hubert Humphrey coming to the house and, and uh, different ones that were interested in our vote. So I learned a lot from that. And, then she started an organization called Target Area A, which helped people find jobs and, and help them get on their feet. Um, that would later turn into Ramsey Action Program. And at, at a point, she had a professional staff of six women and a secretary named Bob. Uh, she kind of turned things around. Uh, I'm glad for this. I, as I'm hearing all the names, it's like, that's a letter from home. Um, I didn't realize, I forget, forgot about some, but it's back on my mind. Thank you. We all read. 
Russell, your family has been such a deep part of the Rondo community, and your service on the city council was just another extension of that. So, Bobby Hickman, Jackie, Lillian, Uncle Gordon, yeah, it's a great, great family. Number 63, the Churcher family honors Rondo. Anyone here for the Churcher family? The Ellis family, 64. Come on. Uh, Joseph Ellis, my wife, uh, Gwen Ellis. Glad to be here. Uh, there's four Ellis's in the neighborhood. None of us are related. I'm the Booker T. Ellis, and uh, <laughs> so that's my generation. Uh, we uh, Two years ago when they started doing benches, we did honor our grandparents and their family in that bench over there. Uh, my son was named Jeshua Ellis, and uh, he was a masonry, con uh, masonry cement uh, contractor. Not a contractor, but he worked as a finisher. Uh, his last job was in the neighborhood, which really made a real difference in making, making this brick here for him because uh, he had a nickname, J-Rock, because the neighborhood couldn't call him Jeshua, so it was J-Rock. And it was great that he finished his life in the neighborhood. All the new concrete sidewalks uh, last year put on Central, uh, throughout, uh, throughout the neighborhood, he was a part of it, helped running the jobs. Um, I like to, again, my son Jeshua, a short life of 45 years. He took his own life. That's hard to say and it's hard to live with, but I'm just here to say mental health with our black men is something we need to wrap around and get with. If you can help me do that, my son's life was not in vain. I also like to shout out to Book of Construction, when my son was 18, he took him under his wing as we were grown up to do in Rondo and nurtured and shaped him to be the man, professional man that he was. So thank you, and I, we wouldn't have had the brick any other way because Rondo was home for me, and Rondo was where I received the most love and comfort in my life, and that's a fitting place for me to come and feel the love and comfort of my old Rondo neighborhood. Thank you. Sixty-five, sixty-six. Ms. Bud Goldberg, Spen um, Spencer Harper. Spencer. Somebody wanted to say a word on Spencer. Here we go. I'm Jennifer Harper, formerly known as Jennifer Cobb, and uh, Spencer struggled most of his life, and I just wanted to do something nice for him. Jonathan Hamilton, are we, we, I felt a drop, come on. If you're gonna say something, where are they? I felt a drop of rain, so come and do it, quick. Come on. Hello, my name is Joyce Dodson Williams. I'm born in Rondo. I was raised at 528 Carroll. My mother took me from the hospital to 528 Carroll. And at the time when Randall came through, I was in high school, so I went to Mechanic Arts. I had to watch that ditch down there from 528 Carroll to Mechanic Arts. And so she worked at the post office. 
at night. And so the, her house at 528 Carroll was the only one sitting there. Everybody else's car, house was gone. She'd come back home once a month and her windows would be broke. And so she got threatened by controlled data. So there was a city councilwoman here named Rosalie Butler that had a radio station that called my mother up and told her to come talk on this radio. So my mother went on there and talked on that radio about what Control Dad did her, because by this time the house was paid for, and they weren't going to give her the money. And she was working hard, and she couldn't afford whatever they were, thought they were going to give her. So anyway, Rosalie Butler had her talking. The next thing you knew, my mother got enough money. So in 1979, she built 690 Iglehart up here, and that's where she died from. And I, I have to say that because this is my mother's walker. I didn't need it until two years ago when I got my knee fixed. But I need it now. And the, and the walker's name is Mary, and that's my mother's name. <laughs> okay, Ransoms. Ransoms. Who doesn't know the Ransom family? Hurry on. Come on. Okay. I'm Rennie Ransom. It looks like Renee, but it's Rennie. And uh, we, we were, Ronald and I, my husband, we uh, had, a, have a home, had a home on 909 Laurel for like, for like <clears throat> 35, 40 years. So right now we don't, we don't live there. But anyway, I'll let Rhonda talk about her grandparents. All right. Uh, what I would like to share is my parents owned property on Lake Adney. It's listed in the historical society as a, a lake where black people were the first to be able to purchase property at a lake and have cabin homes. And it's, it's now uh, listed on the historical society, but they don't own the property anymore, but we still have our people up there that have property. So I want to make sure I tell you that. Um, so my grandparents are Catherine and LaSalle Ransom. I wanted to put a brick down for them because they raised 10 children in Rondo and my grandfather was known as the Tamale Man. And so, yes, and so, uh, of course, there's the family secret of the recipe and it's hard to get a hold of it. Um, and then I also wanted to share too that the 10 children that they raised, they, they grew up to become businessmen. Like my father and my uncle, they had their own upholstery company. My dad used to have his, uh, him and his brother Jerry had an upholstery business on university. Mm -hmm. And my Uncle Buzzy had one also off of Dale. Um, also, my Uncle Buzzy, my Uncle Jimmy, they were musicians. And one of the things I think is interesting is that my Uncle Jimmy had an opportunity to perform and try out for Ike and Tina Turner. <laughs> he didn't make it, but he has an incredible story. <laughs> So that's all I wanted to share, but uh, I love Rondo too. I love yeah. history and I'm researching my family's history and I love listening to everybody's stories and the connections. So thank you. Thank you. Yarborough. Is someone here for the Yarborough family? Well, if not, well, the son's back. Oh, great. All right, well, that's it. I want to let you know that Channel 5 has been here filming, and it might be on the 6 o'clock news. I'm not sure. This whole thing has been live streamed thanks to the St. Paul Neighborhood Network. Steve there is, is, is live streaming it. I want to thank Cedric McClure for, uh, for his help. And did you want to say something? Sorry, uh, since it stopped raining. But anybody that's here that has a golden woman of Rondo mother, uh, please come forward and you can say a few words. Thank you. Hi, my name is Riri. I'm known as Maria, and my mother was Cassie Marie Neal. We buried her today, so I'm here to thank my cousin Geneva for the golden Rondo women, and we're going to receive the brick for her. My intention was to wheel her down, but God needed her more. Thanks. Mm 
My name is Kevin Burns. I'm Dorothea Burns' son, well, her second son. She always lets me know that. Uh, now, I know the, the young ladies from the Pillows family were talking about, you know, they couldn't go anywhere without somebody knowing them. I couldn't go anywhere without someone knowing my mother. And it didn't make a difference whether I was in Rondo or downtown St. Paul or over Minneapolis. Somebody knew my mother and stuff. I am blessed that she's still with us at 93. She was born, raised, worked, retired, and still lives in the Rondo neighborhood. You know, uh, Russell, my cousin, uh, uh, my Aunt Lillian, was my mother's uh, mentor, and uh, my Uncle Gordon, you know, and they groomed her well. She took the mantle for the family, and she continued on, and it's flowing through my sisters, Vicki and Lori, and my nieces, Angela and Tracy, and we're forever indebted to this community for us. And I'm stopping just in time. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, thank you for your attention, everyone. Um, we have ice cream, we have cookies, we have, um, we have uh, applications for next year's brick ceremony. Somebody has asked me about my t-shirt. We have these for sale inside the building. R as in Rondo, so please make yourself at home and spend some time on the history walk. And thank you all for coming.